When uh, President Brown called me and said that the Board of Trustees has decided to award me an honorary degree from Boston University, I was pleased and honored. But then when he later called me and said, or wrote to me and said, could you give the baccalaureate address in Marsh Chapel? I was so elated because I thought that the trustees have decided to give me another honorary degree in theology. <laughs> well, I guess he didn't go that far. And so, <clears throat> but I'm indeed delighted to be with you, your family and friends uh, today. My dear graduates, the baccalaureate ceremony from the European medieval time until today is a service in celebration of and thanksgiving for lives dedicated to learning and wisdom. The learning you achieved through light of knowledge and wisdom you acquired so far from mentors and from the love of your family who supported you throughout. And incidentally, the last stimulus check from them will be cash today. <laughs> As soon to be fellow laureate of this world-class university in a few hours, and perhaps more importantly as a parent who has witnessed the joy of college graduation, I would like to share with you some personal experiences in the hope that you may see why you are fortunate to reach this milestone and what you can do with your fortunate to forge a new future. In this century, you are witnessing revolutions of knowledge. And my message is simple. Always be guided by the light of knowledge to shape the future of yourself, of your country, and of the world at large. When I came to the United States in 1969, I was not dreaming of a Nobel Prize, nor I was dreaming of acquiring a Bill Gates fortune. Armed with the very good education I received in Egypt, I was simply on a voyage of quest for knowledge, that of a PhD research in a reputable institution in this land of opportunity. <clears throat> America was a magnet to many of my generation because of its leadership in science and technology and its unique democratic values. This historic, the historic landing of Neil Armstrong on the moon in 1969 was enough to demonstrate America's outlook on the new frontiers of revolutionary knowledge. People often ask me, how does one get a Nobel Prize? And what is the secret to success? Sadly, they never asked this question before I received the Nobel Prize. <laughs> I believe it was the passion for science that supplied the energy, and it was the optimism that made the almost impossible possible. My dear graduates, success comes to the prepared mind. Success is not like rain that falls from the sky equally upon everybody. Success is what you reap when you sow with passion and optimism. Times have changed. The world is more complex, and the America of today is not the one I came to in the 1960s. We now in the so-called global age, threatened by chemical, biological, and nuclear disasters, and the United States is facing real challenges. The rise of economic superpowers, such as India and China, the conflict of wars overseas, and most importantly, in my view, the change in cultural, educational, and political values. Yes, there are challenges and changes, but you can still make your own success in your own way because you are fortunate to have received an excellent education in a 21st century developed world society. Your education is unaffordable 
to at least 80% of the 6 billion people on the planet who make merely, merely a dollar a day. As importantly, America continues to provide you with opportunities that even today you will not find anywhere else in the world. And here you are free to speak and worship as you please. And you can sleep at night without fear of the government or the police. These fundamental values are embedded in the foundation of this country that is built on the pillars of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Do not listen to pessimists. Rather, forge ahead to contribute in whatever career you are passionate about, in business, government, law, art, or science. I do not know the future of business or politics, but I know the future of science. Your generation and the ones after you will continue to seek basic understanding of nature and make the exciting discoveries that lie ahead. From the deciphering of the most fundamental constituents of matter to the reach of the cosmos boundaries and to the uncovering of our origin and the miracle of life. But there is more. From the beginning of time, the quest for knowledge has been the driving force for revolutionary changes, not only in causing paradigm shifts in our understanding of the cosmos, but also as an agent for the naissance and renaissance of human societies. The European Renaissance would have been impossible without enlightenment about the significance of knowledge and rational thinking. I think too much credit is given to the impact of politics on the progress of society. In fact, without scientific knowledge, there is no development and politicians would not be able to promise prosperity. Just think of what would our world would be like without electricity, penicillin, and the aeroplane. From the agriculture and the industrial revolution to today's genomics and IT revolutions, knowledge is at center stage for societal development. Even in politics, knowledge is becoming essential. And the use of your generation elsewhere in the world is now harnessing knowledge of technology to do what those of my generation thought impossible to acquire liberty from totalitarian <laughs> regimes. You are aware, no doubt, of the people's revolution is sweeping the Middle East as I speak. I witnessed in real time the Egyptian uprise that began on January 25th of this year and remarkably led to the removal of Mr. Mubarak in only 18 days. I saw university students in the hundreds of thousands and then in the millions marching to Tahrir Square in Cairo. The name of the square means liberty, and that is precisely what the youth wanted from a 30-year-old regime. They demonstrated peacefully with impeccable organization skills and in unison. In my generation, we would probably have used stones, sticks, and guns. In order to rise up in your generation, they used Facebook, Twitter, and SMS. <laughs> Without the discovery of the chip, wireless technology, and the internet, this Egyptian revolution may never have succeeded in a peaceful and civilized transformation. Although the road ahead is bumpy, Already hopeful signs are emerging. A few months after the revolution, Egypt announced the establishment of a new city for science and technology on 300 acres of land, and the sole purpose of the quest is the quest for the useful knowledge. So the 21st century education <clears throat> that you are fortunate to have received at BU is far-reaching beyond the classical boundaries, not just 
across so-called interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary fields, but also between nations and maybe soon across planets. Perhaps, perhaps the best words to describe the value of education and the knowledge are those of Thomas Jefferson in 1782, writing in his notes on Virginia. And I quote, the general objects of a bill to diffuse knowledge more generally through the mass of the people are to provide education adapted to the years, to the capacity, and to the condition of everyone, and directed to their freedom and happiness. Remarkably, Jefferson, more than two centuries ago, so the virtue of education on the individual and the global levels. My dear graduates, this is just the beginning of a long voyage and your walks of life. And this is a new life here. <laughs> In this journey, invest your knowledge fortune wisely and forge the place and time into an opportunity. Have a dream as did one of the most renowned alumni of BU, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and work hard for your dream. Without hard work, we are not entitled to a good life. And without compassion, we will not attain the good life in a world majority population of half knots. The investment of your family and your country in you is for a good reason. You need a good education to lead a fuller, richer life. The country needs you to build its future, and the world will be a better place when knowledge replaces ignorance. Thank you very much, and congratulations.